Hello, Ragers. Now, if you're anything like me in the year 2016 and were getting tired of boring English logo and wanted to move towards cooler, high-fashion Russian logo, then I'm sure you're already familiar with Gosha and the events that unfolded. By now, I can only guess that you're expecting me to say, Gosha bad, up votes to the left. But that surprisingly is not the case here, as there is a lot more to the story that I haven't seen talked about since the events unfolded, and if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, don't worry, I will explain everything shortly. In this video, I'll be giving an explanation as to what Gosha was as a brand, then I'll explore the controversy that resulted in its downfall, followed by elaborating on what the designer, Human Gosha, is up to now. Although there are a few videos about this topic already, they're all pretty outdated from what I can find. Most were explaining the situation as it was unfolding and not after the fact when more information came out. So I figured as someone who doesn't have any connections to this situation, aside from owning a couple Gosha pieces that I'm currently storing in the archives in hopes that I can get somewhat of a return on my investments, I can offer up some viable info that will clear up any confusion and hopefully provide you with a better explanation as to what really went down. Without further ado, let's get into it. Real quick though, please give me a like rating. Let's aim for two Virgils. Yeah, baby! You can do it! Georgi Alexandrovich Rubchinsky, who I will just be referring to as Gosha for obvious reasons, was born in Moscow in 1984, growing up during times of political, economic, and cultural changes as a result of the fall of the USSR in 1991, Gosha's designs reflected a generation of post-Soviet Zoomers and echo-Russian street culture. Also, a lot of the designs are reminiscent of early Adidas sportswear and reflect European football-slash-soccer culture. Back to Gosha as a person, he studied at the Moscow College of Technology and Design, and after he graduated in 2008, he founded his label, Gosha Rubchinsky. However, it wasn't until the year 2012 when, get this, CEO of the shoe with the hearts on them, Ray Kawakubo and the CDG family caught wind of the Gosha hype and decided to welcome Gosha into the Come Big Garçon family. CDG would handle the brand's production, sales, marketing, you name it. CDG really took Gosha under its wing and allowed for him to achieve international distribution and placement in notable stores such as Dover Street Market. Thanks to the help of CDG, Gosha began to really gain momentum and popularity. He was quickly becoming one of the most talked about designers in the streetwear and high fashion scenes alike. Further expanding on his already rapidly growing brand, Gosha went on to collaborate with a variety of well-known and established brands such as Fila, Kappa, Adidas Originals, Reebok, Vans, and even Burberry in 2018. On another note, Gosha was really into photography, which is interesting considering the controversy that would soon ensure upon him asking a younger model for pictures, but we'll get to that later. Back to Gosha and his interest in photography, he would regularly release photo publications and books alongside his collections, and he often shot his own lookbooks as well as other brands. In 2016, Gosha launched the diffusion line Pokbet or Rosbet, which is Russian for sunrise or dawn and is, I believe, a metaphor for change and the promise of better days. This line is where we focus on producing more skater-inspired clothes. These genres are similar to the mainline stuff, but just more affordable. Overall, though, this line was basically equally as successful as his main line. At this point, it honestly seemed like Gosha was on top of the world. If you remember this time period, Gosha was everywhere. From e-boys on the Instagram Explorer page, to rap songs and fashion reps users, Gosha was certainly a force to be reckoned with. However, all good things must come to an end. Get a load of that dog. Get a load of that dog. Almost as quickly as he came up, Gosha fell from grace. On December 8th, 2018, a 16-year-old model named Jan Silverling made a post on the High Fashion Talk Group Facebook page. In summary, Jan states how he would like to show how Gosha can't be trusted as a designer. He stated that Gosha recently messaged him attempting to solicit inappropriate photos. Jan also attached a handful of screenshots in the post. He apparently told Gosha his age and Gosha carried on regardless. Jan was also able to FaceTime Gosha to get him to show his face. I'll show the screenshots here. In the first one, it's over Instagram DMs, Jan sent a pic, one can only assume what it was. Then he asks Gosha to FaceTime, Gosha agrees to that or WhatsApping, then they exchange numbers. On to the WhatsApp combos, they greet each other, Gosha says he thought Jan wanted to show him something, Jan says he can't send anything as his parents aren't home, Gosha says go to the bathroom, Jan says he can't, Gosha basically says please go quickly, and that he doesn't think his mom will intrude, Jan says he'll go in when his mom is gone or try again tomorrow. Jumping forward a bit in the next screenshot, Jan says his mom is still in the bathroom, Gosha sends a quirky emoji, and Jan drops the bomb of, you fine with that I'm still 16 at the moment. And then he panders to Gosha a bit more, and Gosha ends with, I'm waiting a picture. That's obviously a lot to unpack, but this is only the start. 
A lot of information was left out in the original post. The Facebook post was then shared to the HFT group's Instagram, where they show off the screenshots that Jan posted, as well as state that Gosha was trying to solicit pornographic images of the minor, and that apparently the deleted messages were more explicit requests, but Gosha redacted them. Additionally, this post was shared again on Diet Prada, which was at the time the account with the biggest audience and the most noteworthy call-out account within the fashion scene. And this is where the narrative begins to change. They post the screenshots of Jan and Gosha on FaceTime, as well as the WhatsApp screenshots. However, in their posts, they claim that it is the 16-year-old fan and not the 16-year-old model, Jan Silverling. Obviously, this post gained a lot of traction, and emotions were certainly running high on all sides. So, the social media cancel mob ensued, as this was 2018 during the height of the Me Too movement. And on top of this, there were already other controversies going on in the fashion world at this time. On the same day of December 8, 2018, another Gosha victim reached out to the HFT group with a screenshot of a conversation he had with Gosha. In the screenshot, Gosha is seen saying to send a few more pictures and that it's okay if a little hard. There isn't much to go off here, but one can only assume what he meant. The caption of the HFT group post states that the messages unsent by Gosha were of when Gosha said to send pictures without underwear on. Now, this post received some backlash, with many comments trying to dispute it and defending Gosha, saying that there wasn't any actual proof, and it's doubtful that Gosha would use his actual verified account to message kids asking for nudes, basically. On top of that, this was reposted to Supreme Leaks News, so by this time, it's safe to say a large number of people were already aware of this controversy. From there, a GQ article was posted on December 11th, 2018 that further spread this news. However, they did include some information from a representative of Gosha. This representative stated in an email to GQ that Gosha has been doing casting via Instagram for many years now, and furthering that by saying, It is a normal practice nowadays. We always ask for face photos, full length, and topless. Sometimes photos and underwear are required in order to understand the volume of the hips. When asked by GQ if this instance would affect how Gosha goes about casting in the future, the rep responded with, We are certainly going to be reviewing how we cast shows in the future to minimize the danger of this sort of thing happening. Now that we have a little more context, the situation is starting to make more sense. Although to an outsider at the time of this occurring who just saw one of the Instagram posts, it would definitely seem weird that he was asking 16 year olds for these pics. Also, on top of the fact that Gosha's mother tongue obviously isn't English, his messages do come off as a send boobs and vagine r slash Indian people Facebook type beat. Although, after knowing what we know now, and on top of the fact that Gosha has always really been in touch with teenagers and the youth, this is something that the brand relies on, basically. Further elaborating on that, Gosha's team issued a statement to WWD, which would be published on December 9th, 2018, where they stated, Gosha, throughout his career of 10 years, he always personally chose models for us. Participation of the professional models and common street cast guys always was important, not only in appearance, but personal qualities. They go on to state that Gosha and his team have maintained many relationships with the models and their parents over the years. For instance, they say in 2016 for the Gosha show in Florence, teens from all over Europe arrived with their parents and it was a pleasant time. They say the brand is designed for a young audience and that they did not expect that it could be used against them like this. As you may have guessed, a variety of prominent figures in the fashion scene have spoken on this topic after it came out, such as Adrian Joffe, the president of Comme des Garçons International. He said, I am deeply concerned about the events of today. Allegations which Gosha has empathetically denied. I abhor the mob mentality of social media and the guilty until proved innocent syndrome which seems to be the order of the day. While I deeply deplore the abuse of power in any industry, I am waiting for the whole truth to come out. And Oka Karput, the owner of the Moscow concept store KM20, who has carried some of Gosha's collections in the past, stated, It would be easy to say that I know Gosha and that he is a good person and as a friend, and I can tell because I have known him for a long period of time. But besides our friendship, I would have to look at it objectively. When I look at the whole picture, I see a kid that got refused and wanted revenge. I mean, those texts are controversial, and if you would like to take it only from one side and create drama, I do not think it is correct, as nobody accused the kid of making up the whole story. And finally, the team issued a full statement in regard to the messages between Gosha and Jan via Hypebeast. You can pause the video if you wanted to read it all, but in short, it basically says that this was a casting call for a lookbook shoot. Jan sent the mail directly inquiring about the casting, Gosha FaceTime him and asked for his photo to keep it on file. The statement also says that the messages we see in the Instagram posts were taken out of context and some were deleted in order to make Gosha appear bad, when in reality it was a simple request for a photo to felicitate the street casting. Gosha blocked Jan because he kept demanding an answer about the casting, and this is why they think Jan was trying to make Gosha look bad. And last but not least, in a now-deleted Instagram post from Gosha on April 4th, 2018, they stated, 
We will stop Goshorubchinsky as the brand you've known it, and that they'll stop doing seasonal collections, but very vaguely it stated that something new is coming. I'll touch on that more in a bit. Okay, wow, that was a lot to take in. I feel as if this whole situation was blown way out of proportion, and it just goes to show how quickly news spreads via social media and how easy it is for facts to get twisted. When taking a look at Google Trends, you can clearly see the toll this situation took on the brand's popularity. There's obviously a big peak in December when all the controversy was going around, but after that, it falls off very rapidly. However, this would not yet be the end of Gosha, as he had other things planned. After Gosha's announcement on Instagram on April 4th, 2018, saying he was going to be switching things up, many people began to speculate as to what he was up to. In a GQ article published on that same day, it states that Gosha has hinted at being tired of doing season-to-season -season collections, and has expressed a desire to switch to one-off projects. And Gosha himself has mentioned wanting to work on the Pocketbet subline some more. Also, a CDG spokesperson told the business of fashion that they're working with Gosha in regard to creating new ways to produce and sell clothes. This all corresponded with the state of things back then, as CDG has just announced its direct-to-consumer brand, and how Vetmont, along with Alexander Wang, were moving away from traditional ways of showing off slash distributing their clothes. However, on February 2015, WWD reported that Gosha would be launching a new project entitled GR Uniforma. As I'm sure you can guess by the name, this new line, as stated on their website, is about uniform, community, architecture, order, and so on. On another page of the site, entitled Close Follow Art, it stated, Uniform can help you not to feel alone, but your community can be outsiders. The first drop was announced for March 16 in all Dover street markets, their websites, and select CDG retailers, as well as KM20 in Moscow. Also, this release would be accompanied by a video featuring music that was recorded at a home studio near the outskirts of Moscow. A lot of the promotion for this brand was done on Gosha's Instagram, but these posts have since been deleted. However, GR Uniforma has an Instagram of their own which is still very much active. Taking a look at some of their pieces, the notion of them having a community feeling is very apparent. Also, the Russian youth and sportswear influence is still evident throughout the collections. On Essence's website, they state that Gosha is trying to define a streetwear uniform, and that each release will serve as a chapter belonging to a yet-to-be-completed play. From 80s-style windbreakers to utilitarian-inspired menswear items, this brand is still very Gosha, if that makes sense. Also, I recommend taking a look at the GR Uniforma website, as it's pretty interesting, and gives some more insight in regard to how they're integrating music and art into the clothing. Currently, they're on their third collection with no signs of stopping. They most recently collaborated with Diesel on a handful of pieces such as the denim jackets and jeans as seen here, which hit stores recently in March 2020. There's also a handful of music videos on their Instagram, they've released a record, and they plan to go on tour after the release of their third collection. I'm not sure if they did the tour or are still planning on doing it as a result of the current situations unfolding in the world. All in all, it's an interesting take on uniform fashion from a unique perspective, definitely worth checking out in my opinion. However, the most respectable, never biased, diet product has spoken out against this new GR uniform line. Comparing Gosha to Michael Jackson, that he is basically grooming his models and saying that he fetishizes young boys. Keep in mind, this was posted on March 17, 2019, after a lot of information regarding the controversy was already cleared up. Also, one of the models that Diet Prada features in this post to claim that Gosha is partaking in nonsery, literally commenting saying that all of the rumors are BS, that Gosha respects his models, and that there's no proof to back any of this. Also, I almost forgot to include this, but in July 2018, Gosha unveiled another one of his many fashion endeavors, a new collection for Pockbed or Rosfet. This collection is further influenced by Russian youth and skater culture. There are a variety of typically streetwear-related garments and even more skate decks with the usual Gosha flair and Cyrillic symbols. A few of the pieces feature standout slash pretty straightforward phrases such as it will be different and it's not Pockbed, as well as the sunrise is not far behind the mountain, which is a reference to the meaning of Rosvet, which in English is sunrise. Gosha also launched a new store for this brand. The store's name was Okra by Tyler the Creator. After the, I'm not even gonna try that one, subway station where Moscow skaters would often meet. The store obviously stocks his new brand, alongside other cool hip skater brands such as Dime, Juicy Stussy, Carhartt Palace, and more. Basically, Gosha wants this store to be seen as more than just a store. 
He wants it to be a community type meeting point to connect all skaters, as this was something he always wanted to do for Russian skateboarding. From the looks of it, they actually have a really nice selection of decks, and the store looks really well put together. Despite the fact that there hasn't been any recent updates in regard to the Rasvet brand, they have an active web store and the store's Instagram is still very much alive and wow, I definitely recommend checking both of them out. As I'm recording this, there are some sales going on on the website, so if you have a proxy from Russia, go get them, Tiger. But for real, it is cool to see Gosha didn't just give up and is continuing his fashion endeavors. Well, I'd say that's about it. Thank you for watching this far. Hopefully you were able to maybe learn something new from this video, or hopefully it just cleared up any confusion that you may have had surrounding the Gosha controversy as well as what he's up to now. All in all, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm interested to see what different people have to say as there are many stances to take in regard to the end of the Gosha brand. Anyway, thank you for watching. Stay tuned to the channel for more content and feel free to check out my Instagram. Later, ragers. Yo, Pierre, you wanna come out here?